Is your Velcro tired of old days? No friction? Does your sandpaper not stick like it used to do back when it was young? They adhere equally well to flesh or clothing. Then it's time to act. We need a new approach. By changing that old backing pad. Well, that was just what we were missing. Yeah, first things first, remove that old backing pad. I mean, first things first, remove that old backing pad. And in my case, it's held on with four screws. So I'm gonna remove them. And now see what years and years of sanding will do to your sander. Like all this incredibly amount of fine particle sawdust in there. We need to clean that. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm just gonna take this one. Better, but not good enough. Some of the sawdust is a bit stubborn and don't want to leave its home. But it's time to leave home now, my dear sawdust particles. And now some brushing to loosen the last few pieces of sawdust particles before I blow the rest into the atmosphere. Well, that's quite exquisite. Yeah, that is much better. And now let's put on the new backing pad using the same old four screws as we used earlier. And I just get it started with the screwdriver before I speed it up by using a drill. But do the last bit of tightening by hand. Just to be safe. And now give it a fresh new piece of sandpaper before we try out the sander again. Did anything sound funny? Did something fall off? No? Then it should be fine and ready for some action once again. Oh, but wait, there is more. Well, I have some extra tricks up my sleeve that you can use to spoil your sander in a good way. First trick is this foam cushion pad that you can use when sanding. It helps with uneven surfaces, like to a certain extent. It will also work as a sacrificial sanding pad, so your backing pad will last longer. Oh, and speaking of sacrificial backing pads, then look at this. I bought something you can also invest in. These intermediate pads. And these intermediate packs will actually contain of two intermediate pads. So one pack is two pads. Yeah, anyway, what are they used for? Well, it's actually just sacrificial backing pads. So you put it on top of your original backing pad so the Velcro will last longer. It's, it's not really rocket science, it's, that's all it is. Oh, actually, that's not all it is because it has like a little bit of flex, not, not much. And definitely not something I would count on being as good as the foam pad from earlier, but it has a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, I got two of these bad boys since one pack, two pads, and one of them will go on my battery power sander since there's no reason to leave one out. Anyway, let's, let's test this. And I don't even know what I expected with this worn out piece of sandpaper that was probably bought too cheap to stick for more than a few minutes there. Anyway, let's put on a, a new piece instead. Much better. You can't hear what I'm saying here because this is actually some inner dialogue. Well, let's put the foam pad on the 230 volt sander. I don't know why I put the intermediate pad on this one because it's not really supposed to be there when you're sanding contour. I guess it's no problem if I'm not sanding contour, but if I was, then I should actually take it off, even though it's a bit flexy, but still, take it off. Oh, 
and a, and a bonus tip. When you are sanding, you should put as little as possible pressure on the sander. Like, don't push, don't press onto the sander. It, it'll just wear out the, the backing pad. So use as little force as possible. Oh, by the way, did you notice that I actually took it off before I sanded the board, huh? No? Go look for yourself. Anyway, I gotta go eat. Bye.